So before we begin, we'd like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations as the traditional owners on the unceded land in which we meet today and pay our respects to their elders past, present and future. So MGS was engaged to complete, a, to complete a master plan for Xavier College in 2020. And the key project for this master plan was a new building for 500 students in year seven and eight, which was later called COSCA, in memory of the recently closed Bayside campus COSCA Hall. With the building accommodating students at a really important transition um, from primary to secondary school, we were especially concerned in creating not just a great place of learning, but a building that would nurture students and support diversity and inclusion. It would encourage belonging, connection and well-being and allow students to be young and playful. The building evolved from an iterative and deep collaborative process between the college, the consultant, sub-consultant team, and with government agencies, most notably Heritage Victoria, because the site was under a state heritage overlay. The result is a layered and richly programmed project. It is designed to be experienced and discovered gradually and overlaid with opportunities for learning, for movement, and for sparking dormant interests in students at this critical point in their education. We looked at how the architecture could support a variety of spatial and programmatic experiences, such as prospect and refuge, compression and release, lightness and darkness, and movement and repose. During the master plan, we identified a previously underutilized part of the campus for the new building, which had been a car park wedged in the site steep topography. And we saw this project as offering a rare opportunity to connect the expansive campus and at the same time solve campus-wide accessibility issues. But of course, the building's ability to connect was not just geographical. While it's pri primarily for middle school students, it was important that the building welcomed all year levels and allowed them an opportunity to rub shoulders and um, develop relationships of caring and mentoring. And as a connector, the key organising device for the project was an inviting learning street. Embedded in the landscape, as you can see in this section, linking the historic core, which is at the left, to the um, sports precinct, which is at the, um, at the west on the right hand side. Hugging the southern side of the building, the learning street blurs the relationship between inside and outside, with teaching and learning on display to those outside and the remarkable campus grounds from within. The southern side is transparent, while the other elevations play a careful role in mediating relationships with its neighbours. As these interfaces are usually viewed from oblique angles, we introduce carefully spaced fins to provide shading and view limit, uh, limit views into neighbouring properties. The Learning Street is a hard-wearing space of brick and bluestone, referencing the historic materials of the campus, the bluestone base of the chapel, and the rich dark bricks and burgundy features of the campus core. While the Learning Street supports spaces for students to come together in large groups, we also saw it as an opportunity to support diverse sensory and learning needs. Inhabitable brick facade elements that reference geological formations of the Greater Melbourne region emerge from the landscape, creating a programmed facade. These geological shapes provide nooks and ledges for small gatherings, solo studying and presentations and exhibitions, both inside and outside. The Learning Street is anchored at each end by two gathering spaces, a library and a small chapel, both embedded in the topography. These two spaces are notable for their art, sawtooth forms, referencing the 12-sided dodecagon, got that wrong, dodecagon <laughs> chapel at the heart of the Bayside campus. Reflecting the importance of these spaces, we went further to try and capture the memory of that campus in this building. The treasured Alan Sumner stained glass from the Costco Hall Chapel encircles the new chapel, an illuminated crown, and a seedling from the Costco Hall tree oak, oak tree was propagated and planted in the library courtyard, a wee fledgling. The sawtooth shapes further reinforce programmatic expression, spaces for sitting, reflecting, and for studying. These nooks sit around the perimeter of the chapel, and these ones are in the facade of the, the library. 
A shared specialist hub is nestled in the crook of the site, and this contains a science lab, makerspace, and art room arranged around a dig digitally enabled breakout space for collaboration, showcasing, and sharing. A covered courtyard brings light into these spaces while offering all weather learning in the landscape. The, oh, goodness, sorry, I keep touching the. Sorry. <laughs> The building's 20, per, um, 20 general purpose classrooms are arranged in four learning neighbourhoods that connect to the learning street. In each neighbourhood, we arranged five classrooms around a shared breakout space that supports individual and group collaboration. And where most buildings are stacked for year seven and eight are stacked horizontally, we, um, we, with one, one year level per floor, we stacked our neighbourhoods vertically so we could encourage cross um, pollination between the year levels. And at the same time, we wanted to enhance social connection across the, um, between each year level, within each year level. So we created what we called neighbourhood stairs. These brightly coloured, well these, sorry, oh my goodness. These coloured stairs puncture the south facade, giving each year, year group an identity even from outside. So you can see it puncturing the facade on the left. And while the base of the building is heavy, the main structure is mass timber, which was selected for several reasons. Of course, sustainability, speed of construction and robustness. But we also love that the structure could be expressed working with the concept of building as third teacher. And maybe, maybe most importantly, with its natural smell and exposed grain, timber improves mental and physical health and of course has um, positive impacts on learning outcomes. Um, <clears throat> the notion of well-being underpinned our interior colour selection. Research shows that greys can cause listlessness, so we look to colours that were uplifting yet comforting. The carpet pattern is a super scaled tartan, blending spaces to imply connectivity as well as to create discrete zones. Landscape and connection to nature was a crucial, crucial design element. We worked with open work to create a series of landscape spaces that weave over, under and into the building. Covered courtyards and verandas provide spaces for learning in the landscape, while a roof terrace planted with drought resistant species offers a sensory escape with excellent views over the sea. New place spaces are currently <coughs> under construction to the west of the chapel, as is a circular indigenous garden that will act as a reminder of the site's rich history and provide an outdoor meeting place. The building is a result of an optimistic and collaborative process between the college, project team and the builder. It has brought a new energy to the school, as well as 500 new students, and embark as it embarks on a new chapter in its history. 